Hello students. Today we will discuss about the motor protection. Uh, just like in our previous lecture, we have uh, discussed the bus bar, transformers, and generator protection. So, like uh, the generators, transformers, and bus bars, motor is also an uh, important uh, part of our industry and uh, its use is very common uh, same as the case in, in all industry we have seen the use of motor is very much vast so the protection of the motor is also play a vital role uh, to enhance its performance and uh, to keep the operation going on so we will discuss uh, its protection uh, in our uh, lecture so as an introduction if we want to introduce what motor is so in simple words we can say an electric motor is an electrical machine that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy most electric motors operate through the interaction between the motor's magnetic field and electric field in a wire winding to generate force in the form of torque applied on the motor shaft. So the operation uh, is nothing new to us. Uh, it's a general introduction about the motor. Uh, similarly, uh, there are various type of uh, motors uh, that are being used in industries. Uh, later on we will discuss in this uh, lecture and we also uh, discuss about the major protection strategies that we can follow to protect our motor. The importance of motor in industry. As an introduction I have mentioned that uh, motors play a vital role uh, in performance of any industry. Uh, like uh, motors are vastly used in textile sector, steel making sector, uh, pumps, agricultural fields and all that. Uh, like uh, we can say that uh, if we ever uh, took an elevator, you had an electric motor involved. Without elevators, skyscrapers would not be possible. Uh, you, you can take the example of vacuum cleaner, you can take the example of food processor, uh, you can take the example of motorized wheelchair, air conditioner. There are so many examples uh, that uh, from which we can uh, have the clear importance of the motors. So essentially uh, everything we have in the modern world from uh, cooling our houses or our buildings uh, to preparing our food or to cool our food uh, that takes uh, to your decks and electric motor is involved uh, furthermore electric motor uh, if it consumes electricity it produces torque as the output like we mentioned earlier uh, however torque is applied an electric motor instead of consuming electric power uh, would instead of uh, produce electric power that is to say uh, so this is the uh, just a brief importance of the motor there are numerous applications of motor there are numerous uses of motor uh, that we have seen uh, we have so much DC motors in industry so much AC motors uh, so if you just uh, start counting in your house uh, number of motors you have so uh, you can uh, find a lot of motors uh, like from uh, food processor to your water pump and uh, all of the other devices so uh, the next question that arises in our mind why we require protection of motors uh, so there are four simple reason uh, we can say uh, that why the protection is required so just remember that everything in industry is surrounding 
around the cost or the cost can be in the form of money in the form of environment or any other factor so we have the four factors that i have selected that why we require protection of motors like the first factor we have the loss of production so uh, like in a process uh, if a number of motors are attached so if any one of two are not functioning well or uh, malfunction so the production can be stopped similarly uh, if the production is stopped uh the production uh, uh, the cost will increase and similarly the product cannot be delivered at the time the second one is replacement of motor so uh, if a motor is not properly protected and uh, it is damaged completely so in order to fulfill that damage or uh, start that operation again Uh, you have to replace a motor so while replacing a motor uh, it is evident you have to pay the cost again and when you have to pay the cost again uh, that means that uh, you are not running an economical setup so again the cost matters the third one is cost of repair like uh, if the motor is not completely damaged or uh, some of a small type of uh, damage has done to the motor uh, so there is a repair cost like uh, if the winding burn out or uh, you can say a bearing fault so you have to repair it and there is a cost of repairing along with that uh, the system or the assembly line for example have to suffer from uh, stoppage uh, the fourth one is cost of man hours due to this emergency uh, similarly if the work is stopped the all the labor the workers of the industry have to stop their work and ultimately the production stops so when the production stops it directly dents the uh, uh, costing system like uh, it's a long story you can say but uh, the core is that we have to protect our motors uh, to that extent we can there are uh, numerous type of relays the protection strategies that we used the daily checks uh, the routine test we have uh, to perform on our motors similarly uh, the important factors Uh, of the motor is uh, that the routine testing in most of the industries uh, there is lack of uh, routine testing so it will damage the uh, motor so we have to protect our motors uh, the techniques uh, or the problems which we can face while protecting the motors we will discuss uh, later on in our lecture so uh, this point is clear that uh, why the protection is important for uh, for motors especially uh, now we will have a brief look on types of motor used in industries as i mentioned earlier that uh, there are various type of motors that we are using in industry so uh, i have selected some of the types and uh, i will explain very briefly Uh, in one or two lines uh, so we can recall uh, the basic principles or basic work of that specific motor as you have earlier studied uh, uh, the work and uh, construction and operation of these motor the first one is uh, the dc motors uh, uh, since it has a high st- uh, starting torque and variable speed Uh, it is used for heavy duty applications such as uh, electric lo- locomotives steel rolling mills hoist lift and cranes so this is the specialty of uh, dc motors uh, secondly we have uh, the dc uh, shunt motor uh, it has medium starting torque and uh, a nearly constant speed uh, secondly the dc shunt motor is used for uh, driving 
constant speed lines, shafts, lathes, vacuum cleaner, uh, woodworking machine, and uh, laundry setups, and a small printing presses. So this is the uh, major application of DC shunt motor. Uh, the third one we have uh, the cumulative compound motor. Uh, the cumulative compound motor uh, is a varying speed motor. Uh, so you can say with high starting torque and is used for driving compressors, uh, variable heads, centrifugal pumps and circular saws you can see and uh, continuous. Uh, conveyors as um, we all know that conveyors are very important uh, in the industry many industries use the conveyor system uh, to move their product from one station to another station uh, the fourth one we have the three phase synchronous motor uh, the important thing about the synchronous motor is that its speed remain constant under various uh, uh, loads the three phase synchronous motor is used for driving continuously operating equipment at constant speed such as uh, air compressor uh, motor generator sets and a continuous rolling mills so this is the important of uh, synchronous motor we have uh, the fifth one is squirrel cage induction motor uh, this motor is quite simple uh, but possesses uh, high overload capacity it has nearly uh, constant speed and uh, poor starting torque so you can see uh, that the squirrel cage induction motor is used as for low or medium power drives where speed control is not required uh, just like the water pumps do well and lathe drills so the next one we have the double squirrel cage motor uh, the working is similar but there is a construction difference so like it has a high starting torque uh, large overload capacity and a nearly uh, constant speed uh, the use basically the the double squirrel cage motor is for driving loads which require high starting torque such as compressor, pumps, uh, large refrigeration setups, textile machinery and so much other uses. Uh, one more type is slip ring induction motor. Uh, it has high starting torque and large overload capacity. The speed of slip ring induction motor can be changed up to 50% of its uh, normal speed. Uh, the important thing about this induction motor that uh, the it is used for uh, industrial drive which required high starting torque and speed control such as lift pumps um, and winding machines. Uh, one more type is single phase synchronous motor uh, because of its uh, as I mentioned earlier its constant speed single phase synchronous motor is used in teleprinters clocks uh, and all kinds of timing devices we have especially the recording instruments uh, single phase uh, series motor uh, it possesses high starting torque and at speed can be controlled over a wide range. Uh, single phase series motor is generally used for uh, driving small domestic appliances like uh, refrigerator and uh, vacuum cleaner you can say. And uh, we have uh, repulsion motor. The repulsion motor, uh, uh, it has a high starting torque and is capable of wide speed control. Uh, <clears throat> moreover, you can say it has high speed at high loads. So the repulsion motor is commonly used for drives uh, which require large starting torque and adjustable but constant speed. Uh, we have one more. 
the capacitor start induction run motor so the capacitor start run induction motor it has a fairly a constant speed and high starting torque speed control is not possible in this type of motor the capacitor start induction motor run is generally used for compressors refrigerator and small uh, portable things one more we have uh, uh, i think that's uh, enough uh, for this uh, motor types uh, like i have mentioned uh, there are uh, various type of motors i have just briefly explained their work so whenever uh, you are designing a protection system you must know the importance of that motor in that assembly line so if you know the importance of that motor in the assembly line so you have to be very careful while designing the protection system for that motor so this is just a brief introduction to recall the uh, basic principle and the basic uh, industrial use of uh, that motor so uh, we can uh, uh, remember that what we are studying and what type of protection and what type of motor we are studying uh, and what type of protection the device required uh, the next one we have the protective functions uh, needed to detect the motor drive's fault so this is the uh, important uh, data we have uh, which is collected by the app group uh, which is ultimately a uh, big name in motor protection and same is uh, the case with the uh, motor drive protection so as we can see from the graph uh, there are five main divisions uh, the first one we have the long time over rating that is 26 percent the second one is insulation part that is 30 percent the third one we have the rotor or bearing fault the fourth one we have faulty protection and the fifth one is miscellaneous or other causes so if you start from the first one like you can see that long time overheating uh, when we proceed earlier uh, we will talk about the overheatings in the motor so here you can see the 20 percent it has a share of 26 percent so we can uh, see that uh, the overheating is the major problem is one of the major problem in the motors the second one is the insulation part which has a share more than uh, any other division it has a share of 30 percent uh, insulation is very important like uh, in our previous lecture of transformer i have discussed in detail that how much insulation is important so if the insulation is not good or if it is damaged so you can face a serious problem of interton faults the third one is uh, the rotor or bearing fault uh, it has a share of 20 percent uh, like rotor is very important uh, so it is just uh, pretty much a link with the mechanical side so we have to also take care of the mechanical side uh, like the bearing is an important uh, component of the motor if the bearing uh, is a uh, faulty or not working properly so the rotor of the motor uh, will not perform its work efficiently so there is a condition that we will study in our next slides that there is a condition of a stall rotor or we can say the rotor jam so when the uh, rotor is jam it draws an additional amount of current so when the additional amount of current has been drawn uh, the winding get heated very quickly so you can see that it is a cascading failure or uh, it is a uh, 
proper effect you can say that uh, you can say the catastrophic failure also that if one device is fail uh, it is linked with other device also uh, the fourth one is faulty protection uh, like I mentioned earlier uh, the faulty protection the false protection or uh, you have installed a wrong relay or the relay is not working you have a faulty CT PT uh, anything can happen so it has a share of uh, 5% the other causes we have uh, there are so many causes uh, like uh, uh, you can see the stator problems the winding problems or any other so it has a total share of 19% so this statistics from AVP group uh, will provide us a clear idea that uh, uh, how much the protection uh, is important and uh, on which area we have to focus on so we have identified three major uh, portion we have uh, like uh, the long time overheating or insulation faults or rotor or bearing so this is uh, the whole data we have so on the basis of this data we will discuss the different type of protections or faults uh, the analysis we have of the ABB group in the previous slide so on the basis of that is uh, analysis we have the protection functions uh, that is uh, needed to detect the motor drive faults so like uh, firstly we have the long time over rating so we can protect uh, it by using proper thermal overload protection uh, like second one we have the insulation fault that is 30 percent i have mentioned so we can protect it by using the short circuit or earth fault protection And the third one we have the rotor or bearing fault that is 20% so we can protect it by startup uh, supervision and uh, any thermal sensor unit uh, like the fourth one we have the faulty protection that is that was 5% uh, so we can protect it like uh, continuous self testing of the protective relay or equipment so uh, the basic purpose of this analysis or uh, to share with you uh, that uh, we have several faults and uh, same as we have the protection strategies so we will focus on these strategies or similar to uh, these strategies so if we will focus on uh, these uh, three or four uh, core strategies so we will cover the major part of the uh, motor protection so uh, we will discuss uh, in next slides about the uh, motor protection on the basis of uh, this analysis life of electric motor uh, the life of an electric motor is determined by the shorter of the following two factors we have the two major factors uh, that one, one, one is mechanical life and the second one is electrical life so if we talk about uh, mechanical life so this life this is the life of the mechanical parts such as bearings shafts fan and the frame uh, also depends upon other environmental effects like we have uh, dust moisture chemicals vibration and lubrication so the mechanical life can be extended by means of regular inspection and maintenance so uh, the most important thing about the mechanical life is that uh, every motor has a uh, different type of use so if the motor is installed in dusty moist or any chemical uh, Envi environment so it is uh, very much exposed so special care is needed to enhance the life of that motor 
Uh, similarly, uh, if we have a motor in a uh, pharmaceutical setup, so it is it has less uh, exposure or I can say zero exposure to dust, moisture, or any other severe uh, environment environmental effects. So it depends that how you manage it and how uh, how the good is. Uh, inspection and maintenance work uh, the second part we have is the electrical life again like I have mentioned earlier uh, the electrical life uh, this is the life of the electrical parts such as uh, stator winding and insulation rotor windings and the cable termination in the motor connection box uh, Assuming that the cable terminations are properly done and regularly checked, the electrical life may be extended by ensuring that the winding and insulation are not subjected to excessive temperatures. Like uh, we have uh, loose uh, cables, we have loose connection, uh, which ultimately uh, have a serious consequences uh, in the form of the uh, electrical hazard so we have to focus it on uh, uh, moreover uh, like the overheating the protection of uh, insulation is also an important aspect uh, like most people in the industry can easily uh, understand the uh, simple mechanical aspect of electrical motors and electrical motors but fewly uh, appreciate the electrical limitation and uh, the relationship of overloading to the useful life of motor. So uh, adequate uh, loading of the motor is very important. Uh, we have a data sheet uh, of uh, motor that how much load can a motor can lift. So if we provide excessive load to the motor it will decrease its electrical life or as well as mechanical life so we have to take care uh, of the motor uh, so it can uh, survive more in an industrial setup uh, NEMA standard for winding temperature as we earlier seen in our previous slide that how much the temperature and its related factor like overloading is important. As we all know that NEMA uh, that is National Electrical Manufacturing Association it has uh, its uh, standards of uh, different products especially uh, the motors. Uh, so as we all know that uh, the winding is very important, insulation is important. So we have uh, divided into its classes. So we have four major class uh, like class A. We have the, the temperature of 105 degrees. Class B we have a degree of 130. Class F we have a degree of 155 and class H we have a degree of 180 so when we uh, buy a motor so uh, it is written on the data sheet or on our requirement set that uh, which class motor uh, winding we have required so if you buy the class H motor according to use uh, you have to pay more uh, like it has special capabilities of 180 degree uh, the winding insulation maximum temperature we have so there are different standards same as for bearings uh, for uh, like rotors and other setups so if uh, a production company the motor protection company fulfill uh, it's a standard according to the uh, NEMA 
so it is credible so this is uh, from the from the winding temperature side that i think you have earlier studied about it there is nothing new in it um, the topic we have uh, early motor protection release uh, in early designs of the motor protection uh, we have a release we which have a single function whose purpose was only to protect the motor against the overloading by ensuring that it never draws in excessive of the rating current uh, so uh, there is only uh, there was only one factor uh, in the early protection stages of motor uh, as the time passes uh, the protection needs uh, grow and uh, same is the case the quality of motor also increase and uh, the protection stability uh, also increase so uh, in earlier uh, protection strategies uh, there have uh, so many large setups uh, to measure the performance and to protect the motors like uh, uh, for earth fault uh, for earth faults for ground faults uh, for checking the spotting on the windings uh, we don't have the vision cameras uh, or uh, uh, other setup uh, at that time so uh, we have not seen uh, any type of protection at that time but as the time increases uh, the protection so get better like uh, uh, due to the insulation consideration uh, insertion of thermocouples in high voltage motor uh, furthermore after a fault uh, occurs we uh, at that times we have used the fuses so there are many uh, things that we use in early stage of motor protection uh, now we have the microprocessor based relays we have uh, programmed them and uh, similarly uh, we have a clear idea that how to protect the motors like uh, in the earlier stages there is no specific uh, attention on the bearing setups or especially the mechanical setup but nowadays it is very important to check the motor its vibration especially regularly because if the if the motor vibration increase that means it is not stable or uh, similarly you can see uh, that if the motor is not stable there is a pretty much very worst effect on the rotor of the motor so uh, there are several type of uh, uh, cause and effects uh, related to the motor in earlier age but similarly uh, as the time is moving on uh, the motor is uh, getting better the protection strategies is going better the drives the, especially the motor drives especially the use of the power electronics in the motor protection or in motor protection or in motor control uh, we have uh, gained very much in this direction and so we have uh, the solid state setups so there is a lot of uh, things we can discuss on it uh, but uh, it is important to understand that what we uh, are doing in our uh, earlier age of protection so I have like I have mentioned only over current protection or over uh, temperature uh, is one of the major factors at that time but nowadays there are uh, many other factors we have to focus on so uh, this is from the earlier motor protection relays uh, system uh, of the uh, motor part one so that's all from our first part which is about the basics of the motor protection that importance and other respect we have studied uh, in second part 
we will discuss the major strategies and uh, the faults on the motor side thank you very much